every airplane in the world is made out of some sort of metal and we're guaranteed to be able to work on every single one of those metals. For a very extreme cases, we're the life or death situation whether or not this jet's going to be able to fly again. If they're waiting on something and they say we need to get it done now, a lot of times it's here's paperwork, here's the drawing for whatever that they need, and then if we have the metal, which we almost always do, then we make it right there on the spot, get it out, pumped out, and they take it and put it on the jet, and the jet's flying again. And we could be done in 15 minutes, could be done in an hour, but it's never longer than a day. It's next to no room for error. Take a standard human hair and divide it diameter-wise by three, and that's what our tolerances are most of the time for almost anything we put in this plane. Measure twice, cut once. Because for us, if you're downrange and you only have so much stuff that you can use, precision's everything. The mission of the Air Force is, you know, fly planes, we win wars, be the best that we can be, and out here, that's what we do. We make everything that we can, and we do what we can to keep them planes flying. Metals technology is critical to Okinawa for the sake of the repairs that we do are big repairs. And if we weren't here, they would have to fly the, the jet off island or bring a team out here, which would take longer. We can be out there in a minute and tell them what's wrong and tell them if we're able to do it or not. So they don't need to go any other agencies. We're right here on Kadena. Making sure that the jet gets up in the air safely is our number one priority. And when we finish it, it makes us feel pretty good because without us, the Air Force could spend a lot of money replacing these parts and a lot of time trying to get those parts without us here. I'm Senior Airman Brandon Rossi. I work at the Fab Flight at Moody Air Force Base. If we can't fix it, you don't need it. We do anything from machining, making any kind of local manufacturer tools that aren't available to purchase, to making aircraft parts, welding on aircraft ground equipment, repairing bushings, and inspecting critical wear areas on the aircraft. Graduated high school, wasn't completely sure what I wanted to do just yet. Uh, wasn't ready to go to college. I knew I wanted to serve my country and do something different, and I started looking into the military, and the Air Force was the best choice for me. Um, I have a mechanical mind. I like working with my hands, and uh, I really wanted to learn how to weld and machine. I feel like what we do is definitely critical to uh, making sure the aircraft are safe and making sure that the pilots come back down safe. Uh, we inspect all the wear items on the aircraft, and without those inspections, there just wouldn't be any certainty in the safety of the aircraft. Pretty much we can fix anything you can break. Within Metals Tech, on a daily basis, we're like the final frontier for maintenance when it comes to taking care of our aircraft. People know that if they need to get a hold of Metals Tech, that the aircraft is really broken. So if something really needs fixed, basically we deal with uh, the innards of it, all the metal working, so bushings, bearings, welding, machining. Uh, we can fabricate just about anything. It's only contracts and uh, technical order restraints that we have that keep us from basically fabricating a whole aircraft. So there's nothing we can't really do. We deal with thousandths of an inch tolerances and sometimes even tighter, which means that a part can't be a hair off. It needs to be perfect. It's attention to detail because Everything we fabricate has some purpose. It's got to hold some weight. It's all structural stuff, so you have to know what it's going to be doing so that you can make it do its job and have the best lifespan. Everyone comes to us from all over the base to repair things, to whether it's welding something or fabricating something up so that they can move forward with the mission and get something done. Our shop is kind of the last effort when it comes to manufacturing parts. So the A-10 is a really old aircraft. A lot of the parts don't get made anymore. So when they can't order the part anymore, they have to come to us normally to have that part manufactured through our shop. We have a multitude of different machines we can use to do our various jobs for creating whatever we need to make. We have the CNC, for example, which is mostly automated. All you have to do is you drop the program 
and you get it all set up in the machine, you can pretty much just hit go and it'll cut out what you want. And if you go use our manual machines, like on the other side of the shop, those are all by hand, so you have to make sure you're doing everything right yourself instead of having the machines do it for you. But we're in Metals Tech, we're accurate down to like a tenth of an inch, which is smaller than a piece of paper. So it's really precise and it takes time, but it's definitely very rewarding being able to hold something that you made at the end. And it's just kind of cool knowing that what you're making is going to be keeping people safe. A day in Metals Tech is never normal. One day you can be machining all day making parts or bushings. The next day you could be welding. We also don't work on just the aircraft, we work on age. We have CE coming down asking us to help them with stuff. So Metals Tech is constantly changing every day. The hours can vary. Uh, we can work, typically we work an eight to nine hour shift, but it's very common to have to work 10 or 12 hours to get the mission done. We're able to fix virtually anything on this aircraft that might go wrong. We can create parts, we can weld uh, parts that are cracked. So we have the ability to fix virtually anything. My favorite part of the job is machining. Uh, welding's fun, but machining, you know, you take a bare stock of metal and you turn it into a part that you know, if you're just making something, it's up to your imagination, so. Also, if parts on the aircraft break that were never designed to be broke or aren't made anymore, we can actually make them ourselves, save the Air Force a tons of money, and get the fighters back in the air.